right. Hello all. I am going to talk a bit about Eracore, which hopefully means less work for everybody. So an introduction, uh, who I am, something about the idea of this, what the scope of the project is, that's very open. What I imagine are some deliverables for the first version. The concept of parameterization, which I think is an important part of, of this project. A bit about developer resources, uh, my plans for the future and perhaps others and, and some tech. So my name is Peter Stöge. I uh, started taking things apart when I was four and a little bit later I managed to put some things back together and a little bit later till, uh, still I managed to build some things of my own. And I've kept going ever since because it's a lot of fun. I, I do software as well as hardware um, on, on many different levels. I've, I have lots of register programming experience on machines from eight to 64 bit. Uh, I've also done web backend things. Um, I make PCBs and schematics every now and then. Not, nothing too fancy, but, um, but what, what's needed. You might have seen some, uh, might have seen me uh, in or around the Coreboot project, LibUSB, um, Osmocom, open source DSM things, LibSSH2, or perhaps Cheaprog, a, a lesser known but still interesting project. I'll mention that at the end if we have time. So the Edacore idea is, is really simple, and I think anyone who is uh, or has done something in this uh, domain has already had it. The, the point is we have a lot of duplicated information, a lot of duplicated uh, data where we don't really need to in, in lots of different tools, uh, well, in lots of diff in, in different tool suites to start with, but even within a single tool suite, uh, we have perhaps different data formats for things that could actually be sharing a single data format. I want to make a part library that can do anything that the open source tools need and also ideally uh, serves the industry. So anything perhaps before and after, well, mostly after the design tools. Um, I, I think that the Eracore data should be usable also by the uh, fabs. So I'll get back to that in a bit. The, the killer feature of open source is really reuse. So we need to do this, I think. And I also, I mean, so uh, show of hands, how many people have created a footprint based on a data sheet? How many of you thought that that was a bad idea and that you shouldn't actually be, it shouldn't be necessary to do this? Yeah, okay. So let's, let's fix that. And, and I would like to have the vendors input their information because they are producing these data sheets anyway, right? So they have this information structured somewhere. Um, I want to import this into Edacore and, and use it and, and stop making these footprints on my own. Uh, this ties into, so, but sometimes you don't want to use exactly what they recommend and this ties into the parameterization, which I'll get back to. Already now, th so this is the first time I ever publicly mentioned this project and it, 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 it's, as it says on the bottom, this is completely vaporware at the moment, but, but we'll see. Uh, still, there is one major component vendor who has said that they are willing to convert their internal data. So that's awesome. And I also got an email the uh, day before yesterday from a tool vendor who's here and, and who wants to talk to me and, and maybe use this or maybe help work on it. I don't know. I, I hope we can have a chance to talk till later. A benefit of, of Eracore, as I see it, is also that it's going to be more up to date. It is more up to date. You can uh, do online updates, and I suppose that the commercial tools do that as well, but the open source ones uh, don't yet so much. And versioning of the libraries, also I think important feature to keep track of what you have in your design, what you, what you use, and how things change. So, but y yes, Vaporware uh, so far, let's see. A question that, that 
we have to think about is what is the scope of this going to be? And uh, my quite ambitious goal is really to go from, from right from the beginning to all the way to the finished product, but baby steps, right? So uh, I think the first step is, is somewhere schematic PCB boundary or perhaps going into both of them a little bit. Uh, so something like symbols and, and perhaps net lists as well. But if we're doing net lists, then uh, as we heard before, or, or as we know, then this is also important for simulation. So then we suddenly have to uh, consider one more set of, of requirements or, or specifications and needs. So far, they're all flat text, which is good. In, uh, flat text in the open source tools, this is good. Verilog seems to be popular for the netlist, so maybe that will simply solve itself and Edacore won't need to deal with netlists and, and that will all be Verilog. It, it seems to be going that direction. Footprints aren't shared, uh, aren't common. Um, and then there's what I call parts. So that's, so far, my, my highest level concept in uh, for the data models. So grouping symbols and footprints and lots of other things also. 3D models for a part. And uh, so what is a, and, and parameterized parts. So different kinds of packages for a, a particular part perhaps is uh, needed if you have a, in the, in the schematic you want to say I'm using this circuit, this, this IC, uh, but at that point you don't care what package it is. In the board layout you do. Still this need to be, the same, it is the same circuit. So for simulation, you don't want to have two different ones. You want to still have just one. And the vendor will also probably only have one model for this. Um, so yes, mm, need to keep this in mind. And for board files and Gerber files, and, and as it says on the end game there, going to uh, um, uh, foundries and so on, uh, there's a lot of geometry to to consider and and yeah, so this is also still still open. Uh, what exactly? So how much to try to do? How much can be done by a single data model? What I think should be in 1.0 is the the well the start of a data model. So abstracting the formats that are there so far, and some kind of database implementation for this model. I envision a C library for accessing the data. So this is what uh, application developers can use, should use, uh, to, to work with this data. Uh, nicely versioned and, and easy to use and with a permissive license so that it can be used really everywhere without any problems and we just get it, uh, get it out there. A uh, web application I think is important for crowdsourcing data so that people on the web uh, and at home can put their things in, but we want to know if they did that so that I keep track of what I've done and I know that that's good or bad. Parameterization. So there are a few use cases where I've, uh, that I've come across where I'd like this uh, to be possible. So maybe I want to adjust some drill sizes across the whole board. That's easy to do in GBA, not so easy perhaps or less easy in, in CICAD. I don't know, I haven't tried it. Uh, more difficult is uh, the second one. I want to hand solder this board, so please extend all the pads outward from the packages uh, so that I have a bit more space to work with. But this is only applying to the footprint, and I don't want to make a whole copy of the footprint and mess around with that and keep two of them. It's, it should be all associated to this one part. And simulation and other use cases will add just more, more requirements, um, but also more possibilities. About developers, it was said before, there are few engineers who do both engineer electrical engineering and computer science. It's more and more locked into the industry, the knowledge. I, I think, so I've heard from several academics here, please push your students to do cross-discipline things. I, I think this is hugely important. I also know that we have some great developers in this room, and we've already heard about two instances of sort of overlapping work with the net lists in Quax and NPSPY and uh, G-Day. There are uh, the net lists that seems to be converging in Verilog, which is great. There are uh, the board files and the footprints. 
which are at the moment different in KiCad and uh, Krita. And I propose to let's do these things just once and do them right and do them together. So I, the, the project exists only with the name. I, I have a bunch of, uh, bunch of domains registered and uh, I'm setting up a track in the Git there and starting to write some code. Uh, until that's done, please come to Freenode. And if nobody else is, is going to help, then I will uh, slowly start to do this for footprints and uh, try to use lib eta core in both PCB and PCB new. So I'd, I'd love to speak with Wayne about uh, the footprint, what the footprint data model is in, in KiCad and, and learn about that while we're here. And that's what I, what I have to say. So thanks for, for listening and thanks to the volunteers and uh, Javier for arranging this. You can, let's talk. I think, so yes, I think metadata such as licensing, right. Uh, question is, will the data model include licensing information? And, and the answer is, is yes, I think that is a very important thing to include. Uh, you uh, also ask about models. Right, yes. So So this is yeah. So some some comments about licensing. How um, many proprietary libraries contain models and symbols which are difficult to reuse, and a, a comment about uh, many GDA symbols and footprints which are licensed under GPL with an exception for commercial use or or any oh. use. Just like GCC can compile comp proprietary programs. Right. Question? So, so, 
so our comment is that many crowdsourced footprints, uh, many, many people are worried about quality of crowdsourced footprints. And yes, uh, and, and I'm worried about the quality of my own footprints even. <laughs> Uh, but but it is a key key thing to get the vendors involved in this and and have them provide their footprint. And it seems like they might want to. Yeah. That's a that's a, a great great point and and a good good input to consider that there are sometimes very specific requirements on footprint standards or symbol standards for that matter, which uh, need to at least be documented in the metadata so that the tools can can find them and, and decide whether and the user can decide whether this is an, a, a usable piece of data or or not. Why not? I, I think uh, I think some kind of authentication of the source of uh, so the question is uh, ab about signing vendor data. If the vendors would be able to sign their data, and I think that's important. I think it's 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 yes, there's some kind of certification or, or yeah, makes sense. Well, the so question about how to deal with many different versions of the essentially the same footprint, for example, or symbol. The the important thing, uh, so and and the comment that it's a user interface problem. Yes, the important thing is that these are all these should all at the very least belong to the particular circuit, the, the particular chip that they are for. Let's start there, because at the moment they don't. At the moment it's just a flat namespace of, of lots of different parts and, and baby steps and associating different footprints with one particular part so that at least the symbol stays the same or there are the, the two variations of the symbol and four variations of the footprint and I can choose which combinations I, I like, but it's still the same logical part is something I'm, I'm looking for. Time for one more. I think that's a really good idea. So there's uh, um, a comment that there's uh, previous work and ISO standards. Uh, certainly, let's 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 see what they've done, and and if it makes sense, and if it's enough, possibly it isn't really enough for what we want to do, or it's too complicated for what we want to do. Then maybe we don't do that in version one, or maybe we do. Thanks. Thanks.